this is me, um, Jan Griekmans, work for Cubex, uh, business applications and M365 development MVP. I occasionally blog, I tweet a lot, and I present in community conferences a lot more. So that's where you find me. Um, now, this when an action is performed trigger in Power Automate for Dataverse is something I recently discovered. And I think many people don't really know the value of this thing. And it, um, once you understand it, you don't really get why it gets less love than the other triggers. Um, so let's walk through it. First of all, so there are some business requirements because we'll walk through this in a scenario-based thing. So a requirement is that when a project is created or modified in Dataverse and the cost for that project is more than 10,000 euros, then we'd like an email to be sent to the CEO and we'll add the CEO as a project member on that project. Now, if you build this um, in a typical solution, this is what you'd get. You do a when or always added, modified, or deleted trigger on Dataverse on your project table. You'll check the condition and you find the cost field and you'll do um, if the thing, if the cost is bigger, greater than or equal to 10,000 euros. And if uh, the answer is yes, you'll send an email and you'll do the add a member to the project action. So there's that. Now, what if your business requirements get an update? We also want, if this is an expensive project, we really like to schedule weekly status meetings with people. So you go back to that original flow and you add the create an event action. Now, all in all, this is okay if there's only three actions necessary to fulfill each of your business requirements. But when things get more complicated, complex, or it's um, you that are doing this one thing, this one condition, and a team member in a different project needs to plug in or hook in to your action as well, then this can become super messy. An additional solution to this uh, could possibly be to call a child workflow. But calling a child workflow always means you'll need to um, update or edit the main workflow, this one, to call additional actions. So what if we could do it or turn this around? What if we could build an event-driven solution? where as soon as this condition is met, we throw an event. We publish that this has happened. Essentially, we perform an action to show that an expensive project is created so that every other workflow or every other thing that needs to hook into this event just can be a different Power Automate flow that's registered on when an action is performed on your project, on the action, expensive project created. So you get a separate workflow, Power Automate flow to send an email, a separate one to add a project member to the project, as well as potentially schedule the event. This gives you the major advantage of building an event-driven solution in Power Platform, because you can also trigger the action from code, from your plugin, from your plugin pipelines, so that you can uh, have a loosely coupled architecture. And everyone, both yourself, um, team members, but potentially even other people that are working on the same environment can plug in, hook in to your application and plug in their own business logic to it. Now, let me show you how that works. First of all, what you need is you open the plugin registration tool. And usually this is used by developers. So don't be scared. It's, uh, it's also valuable for uh, makers, low code. Um, and the first thing you do when you connect to your organization, when you log in, you'll see all of the plugin assemblies that are available in your organization. We'll quickly switch out and do the display by message. It's not necessarily better. Um, but at least you see all the custom APIs that are available because this whole thing is based upon custom APIs that you create. Uh, you see, I have a custom API set up for cheap project created, and there's also one, let me scroll, for expensive project created. It's a plugin, um, it's, a, it's a custom API. And I know 
um, plugin, plugin registration tool, PRT, is for developers mainly, developer focused, but it's super easy to create your custom API. And I know the documentation says that you have to add a plugin to it, a plugin assembly, so that when you call your custom API, it will execute some pro code that is stored in a, in a plugin. Now I'm cheating here a little bit because I don't want or need plugin um, or custom code to be executed. I just want to throw the event. And apparently it's not required to associate in this plugin on the custom API. So the only thing I create is an event. You give it a name, you give it an internal name, you give it a unique name, you give it a description. You see how creative I am when I prep the demos. The important part here is I will register a new one. You do register and you do new custom API. So you give it a name, it will fill this up. Um, you put it in a solution. Let's put it in my event driven app. You give it a description, you skip assembly and plugin. Um, this one is important. Allowed custom processing step type. Because we want to hook into it, you will need at least to say that as, uh, async uh, custom processing is allowed. Because if you do none, they will not show up in Power Automate in the trigger and you cannot hook into it. If you do sync and async, you can also uh, attach synchronous plugins to your custom API. So we'll make it async only. Binding type global is for bound or unbound actions. Global means it's unbound, it's not bound to an entity. Now, if you bind it, bind it to an entity, in our case, project, let me find my project, because this is the entity, this is it. You can put in request parameters. So you say, what's an input? So once you call this custom API, um, that you provide some input values and you can define the response. Essentially for an event-driven architecture, we don't really need the request and response, so I'm just registering like this. Now, if we, if it does it, come on. Now it's hanging. And potentially crashing. So I'll just switch to Power Automate. Now, essentially, what I did in my first flow is when a row is added, modified, or deleted, and the cost is higher than 10K, I'm calling this perform a bound action. So I do the action, perform a bound action. I select the table, and you will find the list of actions that are available on this table. The thing that I do is I associate calling this action, because it's bound to an entity, to a record, um, to the row ID from the when a row is added. So that's my dynamic value. When this action is called, there is this other flow with the trigger when an action is performed. You select your catalog. I do all, but there are some um, default catalogs. For your custom web API, you can also create a, your own catalog and category. If you do it the way that I did in the plugin registration tool, everything will be under all. So you leave it to all category as well to all, and table name being project, because that's where your action lives. Now, here you select the action that exists, expensive project created. You notice this is the trigger is doing it with your display name. Performing a bound action is happening with your internal name in the list. You all know consistency is hard. Um, now, when an action is performed, this flow will trigger. So when this expensive project created action is triggered by our other flow, this flow will start as well. Same goes for my other flow on sending a mail on expensive project created. I can do it like this. So this way, you can split up all the logic and everything in separate components. You can hook into it the way you want. And if you fill your application with many hooks like this, you can plug in custom business logic, or you allow people to plug in custom business logic to your application. This is potentially interesting for ISVs um, that create applications on uh, Power Platform that sell them, that distribute them as a managed solution. So you cannot ed like edit them because they come from the ISV and they're managed. Um, 
But as an ISV, you can provide ways for your customers to hook into your um, their business, business logic. If you look at the run history for such um, uh, when an action is performed, you see that the output when this is triggered, you get the ID that we provided for the project um, that we filled in. You get all the like the logical name of the entity on which it's or the table on which it's triggered, and if you would define input and output parameters, you would also get them on this message which you then for sure can use in any later actions. So even though this flow has no direct link to any of my child flows, it will still trigger multiple workflows, multiple uh, Power Automate flows. The fun part is that by default, there are already many available actions in Power Platform that you can also use. So if you need to plug in on something that happens on hook in on something that happens on account, let's hope it will actually do this. You can have the messages, the actions that are available on default um, uh, tables as well, like merge. So you can plug in your business logic on that as well. If you will see that when you add your custom API to your solution, it will create the entries. See, this is the one we just recently created. It will create the resource uh, in your solution. So the custom API is also uh, solution aware and will be deployed uh, from a solution to different environments. So it supports ALM, the proper ALM practices to move from dev test to production. Cool. So this was a very, very short intro in event-driven architecture and the custom, um, like when an action is performed trigger on Dataverse. It's much more powerful than I first imagined it would be. So this is a, a totally different approach and it will for sure change the way that I will design my applications in the future. So I hope I gave you some insights and some new ideas to work uh, with your applications. And I do think that Microsoft should uh, be a bit more clear on what the value is for this trigger. So this was it from my side. I will or try to get my session selected on event-driven architecture and multiple conferences in the future so you can have a more deep dive on this and not just a rush over thingy now. So thank you very much, David. Over to you. Awesome. Thank you, Yannick. This is this is really useful and very powerful. Thank you for sharing.